Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, would you thank our worship team as well as our dancers? Oh, that is the wrong slide. All right, we're going to continue our worship with our Hebrew prayers. So if I can ask everyone to please rise and face east. For those visiting us, east is right there at the screen as we face towards Jerusalem. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house in all I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. O oh Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow, bend the knee before the Lord, my maker. And as for me, may my prayer to you, O oh Lord, be at the right time. O oh God, in your abundant righteousness, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Amen. Matovu. O Halecha Yaakov, Mishkanotecha Yisrael, Vaani Borov Chastecha Avovetecha, Eshtacha Ve El Hechol Kanchecha, Vayiratecha Adonai Avtimaon Betecha Unkom Mishkan Kavodecha Vaani Eshtaka Vevechraha Evrecha Lifne Adonai Osi Vaani Tefilati Tefilati lecha Adonai et ratzon Elohim Barav chastecha aneini 
ונעיני באמת יישרך. Amen. You guys can be seated or you can remain standing. It's up to you. Next, we'll do the Veshamru, one of our favorites around here. And this is the scriptural basis of why we gather here each and every Shabbat. Not only does this um, talk about why we gather together, but it also gives us a promise that one day all flesh will celebrate Rosh Chodesh and Shabbat in Jerusalem one day. Hallelujah. Amen. Join me. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship me, says the Lord. I'm going to back up real quick. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel when? Forever. It's not when Yeshua's done and Yeshua atones on the cross, but it's forever. All right. Vosham Reuven A. Yisrael et ha-shabbat la'asot et ha-shabbat l'adorot ambarit olam. Vosham Reuven A. Yisrael et ha-shabbat la'asot et ha-shabbat l'adorot ambarit olam. Beni Yuvain, Bene Yisrael, Bene Yisrael, O Ti Lolam, Vusham Ruven, E Yisrael, E Tashabat, La Asot, E Tashabat, Lo Dorot Amberit, O Lam, Kishet Shet Yamim, Asa Adonai. Asa Adonai Hashemayim ve'et haaretz Abav Shamru v'nei Yisrael Et ha-shabbat La'asot et ha-shabbat La'adorot ha-mbarit olam Uvayom ha-shvi'i Uvayom ha-shvi'i, Shavat va'ina fa'ash, Shavat va'ina fa'ash, Vosham ruven e-Yisrael, Et ha-shabat, La'asot et ha-shabat, La'adorot ha-mbarit olam. Vosham ruven e-Yisrael, Et ha-shabbat la'asot et ha-shabbat la'dorot amberit olam. Hallelujah. Blessing of Messiah, the only one by whose name we are saved. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation through Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu ederech ha-Yeshua, Bamashiach Yeshua. Amen. And the watchword of Israel, the Shema. I'd like to ask everyone to please stand if you're not standing and face again east. I'll give you just a second to listen. Meditate on the oneness of our God. Shama Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baru Shem Kavod Malchuto Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai alone. Blessed is the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever. And we all know his kingdom is, and the glory of the kingdom is the king. That's King Messiah, King Yeshua. Amen. You guys can be seated or you can remain standing. 
as we go through the two greatest commandments that are in the Torah and were reemphasized by Yeshua. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be for frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Ba'avta et Adonai Elohecha bechol avavcha uvchol nafshecha uvchol meldecha v'hayu hadvarim ha'ele asher anochi mesacha hayom al lavavecha vishenatam lavanecha v'dibartam bam b'shivtecha bevetecha Uvlechtecha v'aderech, u'shabbacha, u'vkumecha, u'kshatam la'ot al yadecha, v'yayu la'totofot b'nanecha, u'vtata al mezuzot b'techa, u'vishaarecha, v'havta l'areacha kamocha. Amen. And is there anyone who needs healing right now? If there is, I would invite you to raise your hand. All right, we've got one. So if anyone feels comfortable, and if Lisa feels comfortable for smicha, for laying of hands, feel free to gather around Lisa and extend a hand towards her. Otherwise, I mean, you can lay a hand on her. Otherwise, you can extend a hand towards her. We'll go with the Atagi Bor as we declare the might of God in his healing power. You, O Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with grace. Resurrect the dead with abundant mercy. Uphold the falling. Heal the sick. Set free those in bondage. And keep faith with those that sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of mighty deeds? And who can compare to you, king who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead. Amen. So may no flee, verofe, holy mumatir, asurim, umkaye me munato, lishene afar, mi kamoka, bangavuro, umi dome lach, melech me mi. Unkaye umat mi ak yeshu veneman ata halachayot mehitim barukata adonai mechaye ameitim. Amen. You guys can be seated. And if there's anyone who's lost anyone this week, please raise your hand. Angie. All right. So Angie has lost someone. So if Angie feels comfortable, we can go ahead and uh, lay hands on her. As the rabbi and I do Kaddish. And as Rabbi always says, this is an Aramaic prayer that comes out of the book of Yov, who lost all of his children. And he says, Adonai gives and Adonai takes away. Blessed be Adonai. 
magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world, which he has created according to his will. May he establish in his kingdom during your life, during your days, and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the Holy One, name of the Holy One, blessed is he. Though he be high above all the blessings and songs, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. Ye kadal va ye kadash shmei raba belmal divrech reute vayomlin lach malchute b'chaye chon uv yom echon uv chaye de kol beit Yisrael bagala bagala uv izman kariv. Vaimru Amen. Eshme Rabba Mavara La Aulam Ume Amaya Mid Barach Yeet Bach Vaishtabach Vayit Paar Vayit Roman Vayit Nase Vayit Hadar Vayit Hale Vayit Halao Shemedu Kutcho Barichu Leo manka bi raka ve shibrata tush bahata vene kamata da amiran balma vaimru amen o se shalom bim romav hu ya se shalom aleinu Al kol Israel, vaimru, vaimru, amen. Ya ase shalom, ya ase shalom, shalom aleinu. Va al kol Israel, ya ase shalom, ya ase shalom, shalom aleinu. Va al kol Israel. O say shalom bim romal, who ya a say shalom aleinu, vur al kol Israel, vaimru, vaimru, amen. Thank you, you guys can be seated. And now we're going to transition to our tour service. So if I can ask our guardians of the Torah to please come up. Need a total of three. Looks like we got Nino and Todd. And Larry is reading today, so if I can ask Bill to please join us. And if everyone else will please rise as we take the Torah out of the ark. And join me for the Ankamoka. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, and there is nothing like your works. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion is throughout all generations. The Lord reigns. The Lord has reigned. The Lord will reign forever and ever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Ankamoka by Elohim. Adonai va'en k'masecha Malchut ka malchut kol olamim Umem shal takam bechodor vador Adonai melech, Adonai malach Adonai yimlok lo'olam va'en Adonai oslamo yitain Adonai varek et amo vashalom. 
Amen. In just a moment, we're going to parade the Torah throughout the congregation. I invite you to greet the Torah, just as I am, by touching the breastplate and touching it to your lips. You can do that with your Bible, your talit, your scarf, your siddur, your seat seat, or your hand. And um, we do that because God's word is sweet like honey to our lips, and it brings healing to our bones. Also, if you have the energy, feel free to follow behind the Torah parade with your feet. But if not, we'd ask you to follow it with your eyes. Unless, of course, you don't know the blessing, you can always look up at the screen. One last thing on the screen is red words that say scattered. We typically, in our congregation, we stomp our left foot on the word scattered. The Hebrew word for scattered is vaya futsu. So just think of your foot. All right, I'm going to invite you now as we parade the Torah and join me. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from before you. For from Zion will go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. Amen. Vayiben so ha'aron vayomer Moshe. Kuma Adonai, Vaya Futsu Oivecha, Vaya Nusu Mesanecha, Bipanecha, Ki Mitsiyom Te Te Torah, Ki Mitsiyom Te Te Torah, Udavar Adonai, Miyarusha Layim, Baruch Shanatan, Torah, Torah, Baruch Shanatan, Torah, Torah, Lamo Yisrael, Big Du Shato. Amen. You guys can be seated. I'm going to call up our readers. Ta'amo Zakia Batberi La Haftara. Ya amo melech ben Yochanan la brik hahadasha. Bless the Lord, the blessed one. Blessed is the Lord, the blessed one for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Barhu et Adonai ham vorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarak Lolam Vayen. Baruch Adonai Hamvarak Lolam Vayen. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Barchar Banu Mikol Haamim. Vanata Lanu et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai. No tain ha Torah. Amen. If you guys will please rise for the reading. And this week's reading comes out of Leviticus chapter 20. Well, today's reading comes out of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 21. Ukratem ba'etzem hayom hase mikra kodesh yeye lachem kol. Malachet avoda lo ta'asu chukat olam bechol moshvotechem ladoro techem. In English, on the same day, you are to have a holy convocation. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. This is a permanent regulation through all your generations no matter where you live. Amen, you guys can be seated. I didn't write any formal drosh or do any type of research because I really thought this verse spoke for itself. You know, this is something we do every single week with Shabbat. But as we know, at sunset tonight, we have something else coming up. We have a uh, annual Sabbath or Shabbat Gadol, a high Sabbath coming up. And you guys know what day that is, right? You know, you know what that celebration is tonight, correct? I heard Shavuot. All right. Some may also say Pentecost. I think that comes from the Greek rabbi, if I'm not mistaken. Word Pentecost, meaning 50. We know Shavuot means weeks. So 
What's important about Shavuot? Well, there's a couple of things that are important. Number one, according to, according to tradition and the rabbis, this is when the Torah was given to Moses at Mount Sinai. But for those of us who are Messianic Jews, not only do we rejoice about the giving of the Torah, but we also rejoice about the giving of the Ruach HaKodesh, who puts the Torah on our minds and writes it on our hearts. It causes us to walk in his ways and his holiness. So we just have so much to celebrate, you know, tonight. And, you know, given everything that's going on in the world right now, we really need to rejoice and celebrate everything that the Ruach has given us. And we need to be light. We need to be light to those in the world. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu torat emet, vechaye olam atam betochenu. Baruch atah Adonai, notain ha Torah. Amen. And if you guys will please rise. In just a moment, Todd is going to lift the Torah up with these two strong gentlemen that are next to him. And it's customary that we point at the Torah, gentlemen with your index finger and ladies with your pinky. We do that because out of a sign of respect to the Torah, it's not a commandment, but, you know, as I always say, you know, ask yourself, where would you be without the Torah? You know, the Torah defines sin. Join me. Behold the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at God's command. By Moses' hand, the salt Torah, Asher Samoshe, Leaf Nebene Israel, Alpi Adonai, Bayan Moshe. Amen. You guys can be seated. Thank you, gentlemen. As we now go to the Haftorah blessings. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with their words, which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moses, your people Israel, and prophets of truth and righteousness. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher bachar bivim tovim v'ratzavadirehem Anemarim be'emet Baruch atah Adonai Abucher b'atorah of Moshe Avdo of Israel Amo of Invieha Emet Vatzedek. If you guys will please rise for the reading. Among other things, the prophet Ezekiel prophesies about the restoration of Israel about 593 BCE. He reiterates frequently that it's from Adonai Elohim. Today's reading from the Torah is from Ezekiel 36:27. Va'et ruhi etain bakir bachem va'asit et asher bachukai telehu umish patai tish maru va'asitem I will put my spirit inside you and cause you to live by my laws. Respect my rulings and obey them. You God, guys can be seated. Thank you. God sends his spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, inside us so we can live by his ways and obey them. First of all, we must understand that this is not to control us or make us into puppets. We must still desire him and want to do his will, but the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do so. 
to overcome the enemy. Does Ezekiel's prophecy come true? Absolutely. Let's take a look at some timely events concerning Shavuot. Shavuot is the celebration of the first fruits of wheat and the preparation of the harvest to come. It was on Shavuot that Moses came down Mount Sinai to give the Israelites the Ten Commandments on tablets of stone. Shavuot is also the day that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in Acts chapter 2. We see this. The Torah is now in our hearts of flesh and in our minds. Both times the presence of the Lord was apparent by loud noise and fire. There was no mistake and no coincidence. God has woven everything together perfectly from the beginning. We are his love story. We have been blessed with the whole canon and the Holy Spirit. We have no excuse. The Lord is faithful, and what he says will come to pass. If the Holy Spirit was given as a first fruit, Are you ready for the harvest of his second coming? Listen for the loud noise of the shofar and look for the day of fire. Amen. To the Rabbi Zakia. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, rock of all eternities, faithful in all generations, the trustworthy God who says and does, who speaks and makes it come to pass, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God who is faithful in all his words. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Zor kol halamim Zadig bechol hadorot Ha'el haneman Ha'omer v'oseh Am deber unkayem Shekol devarav amevazedek Neman atahu Adonai Eloheinu Nemanim devarecha, bravarecha mi varecha, akolo yashuv rekam, ki el melech neman, brahaman ata, baruch ata adonai, baruch adonai shemo, ha el haneman bechol devarav, amen. And the blessings of the Brit Hadashah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the words of the new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Mashiach Yeshua Vahadi bro shahabri hachadashah Baruch ata Adonai Notein habri hachadashah Amen If you guys will please rise for the reading. Today's reading is from Acts 2.1. Uv yom me lot shalat ha shavu ot ne e sefu ho lam rev ekad. The festival of shavu ot arrived and the believers all gathered together in one place. You can be seated. Rabbi asked the question, according to Torah, where did the people go to gather on the festival of Shavuot? Exodus 23, 17, three times in the year, all your males shall appear before the Lord God. Were these believers following Torah? Yes, they were. Um, I'm going to read John. I'm sorry, Luke. 
2449. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with the power from on high. Verse 2 of Acts 2. Suddenly there came a sound from the sky like a roar of a violent wind, and it fell, and it filled the whole house. And now I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish with the, the praise and worship team. Um, breath of heaven, come breathe on us. Breathe on us. Amen. So the Rabbi Melech and Yochanan. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a word of truth and has planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natah lanu hadavar ha'emet, v'chaye olam atah betocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, notein habri chachadasha, amen. If you guys will please rise as we return the Torah to the ark. And join me for the eight time. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all of its paths are peace. Bring us back to you, O Lord, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Eight time he la kimba. Vatom Kreha Mousha Racheha Darche Noam Vachona Tivoteha Shalom Ashivenu Adonai Elecha Vanashua Chadesh Chadesh Yamenu Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem Amen. You guys can be seated. Would you join me in thanking our readers as well as our guardians of the Torah? Kol HaKavod, all of the glory goes to you, Adonai. All right, it is 2.53 on the clock here. We're going to take about a seven-minute break. And after that break, we're going to come back for announcements, prayer requests, praise reports, and followed by Rabbi's message. Just listen for the sound of the shofar, and we'll see you in about six and a half minutes.
I don't know. I don't think everyone else came back yet. Do I need to go louder or longer? <laughs> need an encore. Hold on. Got a couple more. All right. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Shabbat Shalom again. We're going to go ahead and uh, go over some announcements as well as uh, praise reports and prayer requests. I got one important announcement from Kathy um, about two days ago, I think, via text. Is there anyone in here that's planning on going to Israel with the congregation? Raise your hand if you are. Wow, nobody wants to go to Israel? What? Oh, okay. Well, really important, if you are going to Israel, you have to make sure that you have at least six months left on your passport at the time that we go. If you don't have six months left on your passport, now is the time to go and apply for or renew your passport. I think Kathy said it's taking about, what, 12 weeks or so for press? Yeah, the post office, I know, is the most common way people do their passports. So, yeah, this right now is a good time to get your passport ready, apply for, renew, you know, that way if you want to go, because if you don't have at least six months on your passport, they're not going to let you on the aircraft. So, we don't want that to happen. All right. Tonight, tonight, like I said before in my short drosh, we're going from one Shabbat to another. So tonight we have another Shabbat. Starts at 825. We're going to have our Shavuot service. We know the Torah commands us to do two things on one of our either weekly Shabbat or the annual Shabbat. One thing that it commands us to do is to what? Don't do work. Don't do any ordinary work, any of your occupational work. The other thing it says is, what does it say? Mikra Kodesh, a holy assembly. We are to have a holy assembly. So rather than coming back tomorrow, which obviously, you know, this place would probably be pretty packed with Redeemer's congregation tomorrow. Rather than come back tomorrow, we're going to do that second service tonight. As soon as the sun sets, because... We have gathered on that day. So we're going to have an oneg after service. So feel free to stick around and have some oneg. I brought some brownies for the rabbi. So I think he'll be. Yeah, after this service, after this service, not after the late service. Yeah, good point, rabbi. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have an oneg. And then we're going to have Shavuot service tonight. And like I said, tomorrow is the annual Shabbat. So it starts tonight. But tomorrow you don't want to work. You don't want to work. You want to rest. Rest and celebrate the giving of the Ruach HaKodesh. One other big announcement. I think we've already said it, but uh, Elihana Elia is coming back on June the 18th. We all know what a blessing she was when she came back in January, her and her mom Hadassah. And we're blessed to have them come back on June the 18th. All right. With that being said, I'm going to ask Bill to come around with the microphone and see if we have any uh, praise reports or prayer requests that we can be in prayer for. So if you have one of the others, you can raise your hand and Bill will come over. Kathleen. I, I have a praise report. Um, the past two weeks have been difficult, to say the least. But within a week, I had five people very close to me in the emergency room, including myself. But went through it all, and everyone is fine. 
it was just heart issues for everybody and couldn't find any reason for them. Um, I passed out at the Naval Hospital with 80 over 42 blood pressure. Couldn't find anything Oh my wrong. goodness. Um, the Lord brought us all through it. So very, very stressful, stressful, stressful week. But um, thank you for all of your prayers and for those that knew. And I praise God that he got us through. Rafi Gadol, Baruch Hashem. He is our great healer. Lena. Oh, Elijah first? Okay. Sorry. Uh, as you know, we're back. The Lampins are back now from our trip. We wanna, we're very thankful that we were able to get back safely. <coughs> I'll be at sickly, but safely. So praising the Lord for that safe trip. I'd also like to send up uh, prayers for Lourdes. I know she's lost something like four family members this year, and uh, she really misses her mom. Um, and it's tough, looks like. So definitely keep her in your prayers if you would. I've got a few. First, Emily's doing a lot better. She's with her mother this weekend. Baruch she's Hashem. actually starting to walk on her uh, foot a little bit better. Swelling's gone down quite a bit. So, Rabbi, you'll get your crutches back next Shabbat. <laughs> <laughs> also, after Shabbat last week, uh, I went to a graduation celebration. And as I was leaving and getting in the car, I had this sharp pain in my leg. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it home or not. And then I could barely walk on it. Um, it lasted about four days, and I kept um, exercising it. And I don't know what was wrong, but I was like, I continued to practice at home some dances, even though it hurt. And by this morning, all was gone. Everything's back to normal. So I don't know what happened, but I'm thankful for that. Book Hashem. Um, also, I'd like for y'all to pray for my boss. He's gone through some uh, tragedy. Uh, he's lost two of his best friends just this year. And uh, the, uh, the second one that passed away was day before yesterday. And he's really having a tough time dealing with it. He's got to make a trip up to Indiana now for some funerals. And then I have another coworker. He lost his mother. Um, about six days ago. So uh, both gentlemen need prayer. Thank you, Lena. Hey, y'all don't know me. Most of y'all don't. I'm Regina. Um, Shabbat Shalom. There are two babies um, that are close to my family, the friends or the grandparents of these babies. One of them is hanging on the brink of life. Um, has three viruses, only one they can identify. He's six months old. Um, he also has dwarfism, so he already comes with a lot of uh, health issues. But they've had to induce him into a coma just so that they could try to clear his lungs. And um, he can't bring his body temperature up. He's just very, very low in temperature. So if y'all could please pray for his name. His name is Waylon. Um, there's another baby. All of this happened after the uh, formula incidents, giving them different things to try to feed them, and now they've gotten um, a stomach bug that they can't get rid of, and they're just their bodies are reacting in a way that, that they shouldn't be. But please pray for, I don't know the other baby's name, but it, the mama is Bria, her baby, and then Waylon. And then a friend of mine I went to go visit today has had back surgery, and um, she has lost her way, but she's coming back to the Lord. And uh, she just needs prayer right now as she's healing both physically, mentally, and spiritually. And her name is Anne. You just lift up her and the babies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do have a praise report on Vince. I know you all have been uh, praying for him. He is at home. He's uh, got hospice care, but he's doing well. He's actually getting up, and he has a path that he has to walk around his house every day. He goes about 15 laps, 
and um, he's looking better. He's still frail, but he's doing a lot better than what he was. So please continue prayers for Vince. I'd like to request prayer for Jane. She fell on Thursday, hit her head, so her, she got a goose egg on her head, and her neck and shoulder are bothering her. So she'll be fine, but prayer between now and then would be appreciated. All right, anyone else? Most of y'all don't know, but my daughter, Julie, that came with me the last time I came, she was in a horrific car wreck on December 2nd. Um, she was a level three trauma. Life flighted was level 15 by the time she got to the hospital due to prayer. She shouldn't be walking right now. Um, Hashem had covered her entirely. Her praise report is, and I know she would be here to give it to you if she was able to come today, but um, not only is she walking, but she is driving and independent, and uh, God has blessed her with another car, so she is back to life. <laughs> Amen. Sherelle. I don't know this, if this is in order, but my heart was so touched with the prayer request for the children, the babies. Is it okay if we pray? Okay, hallelujah, mighty God. We come before you humbly knowing that you are a prayer answering God. You're a covenant keeping God. So Father, right now you heard the cries of these children. Thank you for your absolute, total, complete covering of them. Cover them with the spirit of God. Cover them with the healing powers that flow from them. Throne room on high. Father, we just thank you. These are little precious gifts that you've given to these parents. And Father, we know that they are made in the image and likeness of you. That you are perfect, all things in heaven are perfect. We thank you that these little ones can be totally and completely healed in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just want to lift up every other prayer request, spoken and unspoken in this room, Lord. While some of us, like myself, are, have a hard time with names, Lord, you know each and every person by name. You know the amount of hairs on their head. You know everything there is to know about them, Lord, including what's best for them, Lord. So, number one, we rejoice at all the miracles and the healing and restoration and resurrection you've done amongst us in the congregation, Lord. But we also want to continue that you pray, to pray, Lord, that you will continue to heal and comfort and help those who are going through difficult times, Lord. We know that you are Rofe Gadol. You are the great healer, Lord. You're the great physician, Lord. And we know you know exactly what each and every person needs, Lord, to bring healing to them, Lord. So we lift them up to you right now. We place them in the palm of your hands, Lord. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. I just wanted to thank, thank you for all the prayers about my eyes with the cataracts and the laser assist, everything. Now, one is completely uh, really good. I can see really good out of it. But the other one, which I've always had a problem with, is a little bit on the slow side here. And uh, they're kind of watering one minute and getting dry the next. So I still got, you know, time before I go back to the doctor and everything. But um, I would like you to keep us in prayer. And Jerry, too, he's going... Uh, for his surgery, he has to get cleared from uh, a heart doctor, and they found out that he's got a slight murmur, and I'd like prayer for that. He's got to go for a stress test and for, um, uh, what is what is it they call it, uh, 
pictures of your heart. I forgot what it was now. Yeah, an echocardiogram. Yeah. So this we do next week. So um, just keep us in prayer. Lift us up before the Lord, and we appreciate it. And thank you very much. One last thing I'd say before Rabbi comes up, if you have a cell phone, if you can please silence it or turn it off so that way um, there aren't any distractions during Rabbi's message. Thank you very much. Shabbat shalom. Sorry, it's taking a little longer than usual <laughs> or to come up for some reason. But since it is, why don't we pray a little bit more? Rafa'enu Radonai, Vene Rafe, Hoshienu. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Save us, and we shall be saved for you are our praise. Grant complete healing, Rafua Shalema, for all our wounds, wounds of every sort, for you are the God and King who heals and is faithful and merciful. Blessed are you, Adonai, healer of the sick of your people, healer of the sick of Israel. Anachnu mapilim kol hachanunenu b'shem Yeshua HaMashiach. We offer all our prayers in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Amen. We've been doing a series for the last two weeks, and we're going to finish today with Zechariah chapter 14. It's not all we'll do today, obviously, uh, but that's where we're going to start. And Zechariah 14, it goes along with Yechezkel, or Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, right? We established this. Uh, some people uh, say that it's three different wars uh, with Gog and, and his coalition. We, I believe it's one war with more detail in Yechezkel 38 and 39. It makes the most sense. There's too many parallels, too many things indicating that for me. And so what happens here is there's a coalition, uh, which is either all of the nations, but certain ones are singled out in Yechezkel and Ezekiel, uh, either all the nations or the nations that are represented, as we could see today, like how would you represent all the nations? Well, maybe it's a force from the UN or something, right? Or, or a force that is um, authorized by the UN. Or... Uh, we could also see that, and we talked about it the other week, the nations that are mentioned, there are, they're in groups. There's a group of nations that are men mentioned first from Yafeth, 
and that includes uh, Magog, of whom Gog is the leader. And then it, it also mentions a group of nations that are from Ham and a group from Shem, from Shem, right? Uh, and that could be representing all nations. And all of them are coming against Jerusalem. All of them are, it's hard to compete with that. <laughs> all of them are coming against Jerusalem to do battle, to go to war against Jerusalem. And it says the city is actually taken and half of the city is going into exile. And, and uh, many of them have already died when suddenly, when it looks like there's no hope left, suddenly Adonai comes to intervene. At the lowest moment, the time of Jacob's trouble, worse than any other time in history for the people of Israel, for the people, you know, the descendants of Jacob, at their lowest point ever. And that's saying something. If you know anything about Jewish history, that's really saying something. Something, a time that's worse than the Holocaust. It looks like all hope is lost, and then comes Adonai. He comes down like lightning, right? He comes, and it says in, in Zechariah that his foot, his feet, they land on the Mount of Olives, and the mountain splits, creating a huge valley through which his people flee from their enemy. And then that's not the end of the story, right? There are things in the middle, like uh, suddenly, you know, fresh water, living water is flowing out from Jerusalem in both directions, all the way to the, to the Mediterranean Sea, all the way to the sea in the east, and this sort of thing. But uh, those, that's sort of like a little interlude talking about those things. Because he lands, boom, the mountain splits and water starts going, but the battle is still going on. He goes to war for his people. It's described as a decisive, destructive blow or a plague against those uh, enemies of his people. And they are destroyed in a way that matches, right, many of the things that uh, in the ANE, the ancient Near East, that were done to mortal enemies of a country. They used to have their skin flayed. They used to have their eyes put out and their tongues cut out. And this plague their skin comes off them as they're standing. Their tongues and their eyes rot while they're standing. And many have, have made you know, conjecture that this is maybe an atomic uh, thermonuclear blast or something. Uh, we'll know when we see it, but it's interesting because it doesn't affect his people. It only affects the enemies of Israel. And so that's kind of where we left off. Let's see here. Return of the king. Why does he return? It's important not to forget why it is that he returns. He's returned. Some people, you know, there's a lot of people out there think God is done with Israel. And we, we pound it into the ground here that no, he's not. Every book you read, it, it, it comes out more and more. And here we are at the end of time when the king is returning. He's returning to rescue his people, Israel, in Jerusalem. How much more plain can it be? God is not done with his people, and he will never be done with his people. We should know this already because he is a God who is what? Faithful. If he, if he had some old people and got rid of them, that wouldn't be faithful. How could you expect him to be faithful to you as some new people of God or something if he wasn't faithful before? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't match his attributes. It's not who he is. This, day, this is the day of the Lord that's being described in these passages, in these chapters. The day of the Lord. That should sound familiar. From Revelation and other places we read about it. This is giving us more insight about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is the day of his return. It's not the day after Shabbat. It's the okay, like some people say. It's the day of his return. It's the day of the Lord. It's described. Thank you, Karen. I guess she's in the other room right now. It's a day of fire. The prophets describe it as a day of fire. It's not a day that's complete, that's, that's, bright. It's not a day that's entirely dark. It is dark and gloomy 
until the evening. It's a day that is not completely evil. It's a day that's not completely good. It's a day that is very, very evil until when the sun should be going down at the end of the day, suddenly there is light. There is light. That's when Adonai comes to save his people. And we know through other texts, who is this Adonai who's coming to save his people? Who is it that Yehuda or Jude is talking about coming, riding on a white horse with the armies of heaven on his back to, to come back to the capital city of Jerusalem? Who was it that said, I will not return until you cry out, Baruch haba B'Shem Adonai? Who was that? Yeshua. Thank you. This is a day of battle. We come back, and the text said, <laughs> there's a text we read here, we, we will be with him. We will be in that army. We are part, he's Adonai of hosts, Adonai Tzavaot, the God of armies. We are part of that army. And those enemies that have been mocking those enemies, who have been oppressing uh, the people of God for all this time will be like ashes under our feet. <sighs> it's not what you usually think of. It's not the Yeshua who's all, calm, you know, passive and nice and putting up with everything all the time. It's not, right? The, the Yeshua who winks at sin all the time that you hear about preached in many places today. Not that, no, no. He's coming back to judge the world. To judge the world. There's time now. He's very, very nice. He's very, very calm. He, very kind. He's long-suffering. He's putting up with us, giving the, every ap opportunity possible for those who have not come to him to do what? To do teshuva. Not to say, I know that there's a God. I'm safe now, right? No, even the devil believes there's a God. And no, he is not safe by any means. The word in Hebrew, we talked in Hebrew class earlier uh, from the root, uh, same root, you know, um, same word, emunah, we talk about it here all the time. It is, it is faith. It was biblical faith. It's a faith that's evidenced in your life. If you don't have evidence of your faith, guess what? You don't have emunah. Faith, the biblical word emunah, is not just faith. It's also faithfulness. It's the same word. If you don't have faithfulness, you don't have faith. It's as simple as that. Now we're going in, into an aftermath. He's come back with his armies. We've destroyed all the enemies. Now comes the good part, right? Yay, it's over. The battle is over. The aftermath. In this aftermath, there will be, you know, people think, what would we do when Yeshua comes back? You know, are we going to be up in the clouds uh, on, a har on a little laying back, kicking on the clouds and, you know, playing a harp or something? What's going to be going on? Well, for several months, we'll be burying <laughs> the bodies of that coalition. And we talked about the name of the valley that they'll be buried in, how it's a play on words. Gehinnom, Gehimon. Gehimon. Hamon, the valley of Hamon to the valley of Hinnom, which is the valley outside of Jerusalem, the deep one where the fires never go out. This is where they will be buried, in a valley where the fires never go out. Several months we'll be burying them. So now we go on to verse 16. To verse 16. Then it will come about that all those who remain from the nations who came against Jerusalem, so it's interesting, some of them who came against Jerusalem will be left. That's interesting. Will now go up out of necessity year by year. See, they didn't have to come to attack Jerusalem. That wasn't necessity. But now that he's returned, the, the people who are left will be coming up to Jerusalem for a different reason, and they'll be doing it out of necessity, year by year, every year, to, to do what? To go to war? No. To bow down. And the word here for bow down is in the hishtafel. You know the hishtafel? You remember? It's a repetitive 
action. They will be bowing down. What does that remind you of? Repetitive bowing down. Repetitive bowing down low. The nations will be coming and doing this before Yeshua, before Adonai. Two, they will be bowing down in the Hishtafel to the king. Who is this king? Adonai Tzavaot, the God of armies. And to celebrate Chag HaSukkot, the Feast of Sukkot. Now we have some commentators on this who I found interesting. Matsudo said, the people who repented when they saw the catastrophe, that catastrophe that was befalling their camp will mark the anniversary of the miracles they had witnessed during the war. They will go to Jerusalem and offer sacrifices. That's interesting. That's interesting. You know, we think uh, Romans 11, when, when, when uh, those branches, natural branches, many of the natural branches, not all, have been broken off and they're laying at the root of their tree, which is the tree of Israel, that it says one day the ungodliness of Jacob will be taken away by God and that it's in, which infers repentance to Shuva, and in this way all Israel will be saved. Right? And we know from the prophets like Zechariah, when we see him coming with the with the right, the pierced hands that we will mourn. All those uh, Jewish people who are sitting there desperate, surrounded by the enemies, will see him coming, breaking through the clouds, and will know who he is. There's no denying it. He's coming to rescue us at the last interval. They will do Teshuvah. And, and we've talked about that many times, but it, it appears that some of the nations who have come up to attack Jerusalem will be seeing it also and say, uh-oh, uh-oh, and will not stay in that rebellion, but will also do Teshuvah. Because here they are, year by year after, afterwards, and these are ones, again, who came up to attack Jerusalem will now be coming to Jerusalem to celebrate Sukkot and to bow down repetitively to the king, to Adonai Tzavaot. Are you with me? I'm just telling you what the text says. All the efforts, Hirsch says, all the efforts of the nations using their powers to fight against connections with God and his Torah, his laws, end at the end of the age all these efforts to say, to break away, like in Psalm 2, right? Psalm 2 is all about the nations trying to break the chains. Let's break his chains asunder. What chains are they talking about? They're referring to the Torah, to God's commandments. And the nations, the goyim, the nations are saying, we need to, let's break away from God. What's happening in our world right now? Every commandment you could think of of God is being denied and trying to be, and, and being fought against. Sexual perversion is the order of the day. And every other commandment you could think of, murder, ab abortion, it, I'm sorry, that's what it is. Everything you could think of, of God and his Torah is being fought against by the nations. But all the efforts, Hirsch says, of the nations using their powers to fight against the connections with God and his laws end with their acknowledging God as king and coming to Jerusalem to celebrate one of the Mohadim, the, which is Sukkot. Every year, Sukkot, he says, because he's Ashkenazi, of course. <laughs> all right, next verse. Zechariah 14, 17, and it shall be, it will happen, folks, it shall be that those from the families of the earth not going up to Jerusalem to bow down deeply, Hishtafel, bowing down deeply and repetitively to the king, Adonai Tzavaot, that upon them there will be no rain. Folks, that's where your crops has your crops grow. That's how you get your nourishment from your crops. You don't get to eat. You get famine 
if they don't go up to worship Adonai Tzavaot, these people who are left, if they, you know, some change of mind or something, then they will experience famine. They won't eat. Remember, Sukkot is at the very beginning of the rainy season. And at Sukkot, an important part of the festival of Sukkot, and we've talked about this on Sukkot, it was and it will be the water libation ceremonies where there was almost no rain left from the hot, dry summer, but still the Kohanim would go down that steep, uh, steep hill outside of the dung gate down to the Pool of Siloam. That's a steep, steep uh, incline, right, Kathy? How many of you have been there? Pool of Siloam. That's steep, right? Uh, going down is steep and coming back up, it's even steeper. <laughs> it feels like it, right? You go down and they would take a, pic a picture of water from whatever's left there, after hot, dry summer, I have to walk up that st with people singing and dancing all around them, but it's still a <sighs> hot and sweaty. Getting up, up to uh, the top and pouring that water out, what's left of your water, pouring it out, saying, we trust you. Yes, there's hardly any water left, but we trust you to provide for us again. This is the ceremony where we pray to God for his blessing of rain. So the nations, the goyim, who fail to do this, who fail to come up on Sukkot and pray for his blessing of rain, will not get that rain. Will not get that rain. All these years, all the many, many years that Israel existed with the temple in place, Sukkot was the time that we made sacrifice. You know, the royal priesthood, the priests... Uh, priesthood for the nations. This is the festival where we made sacrifices for the nations. Those 70 bulls was on Sukkot. Even though they hated us, we were making sacrifices for every one of the 70 nations. The 70, you know, all the nations we have today came from 70 families. Uh, initially, 70 family groups made the nations. You know that, right? And those 70 bulls were for those 70 nations. And that's why there were 70 bulls sacrificed on Sukkot. So that last comment was from Rashi. Then we go to the next verse. And if the family of Egypt does not go up and not come to Jerusalem, then it, Egypt, Mitraim, will not, then it, I'm sorry, it, the rain, then it, the rain, will not be upon them. This is going straight from the Hebrew. It will be a plague with which Adonai will strike the goyim, the nations, who will not go up to the feast, the feast of Sukkot. So something we should think about here. Egypt is the one nation on the earth that I know of that doesn't depend so much on rain. Right? Do you know that? How many know that already? Egypt... It, its crops grow because of the overflow, the annual overflow of the Nile. There's a time of year that the Nile floods and it gets all the water out into the areas to, um, you know, to help all their crops grow. Egypt doesn't get much rain or depend on rain. Their crops are watered by that annual flooding. Will that fact encourage them to say, well, that's no threat to us. We don't have to go. We don't need any rain, right? Will that make them cocky? Will that make them arrogant? Is this why Egypt decides not to go up? Egypt is often, often described as an arrogant nation. They were seriously humbled in ancient times, but they're still, even now, still thinking of themselves as, as leaders in the region. Thus, Targum Yonathan says, they will be deprived of, quote, their rain. What does it mean? When he's, their rain is different than everyone else's rain. Their rain is the overflow of the Nile. Are you with me? Meaning there will be no annual flooding that year for them, and they will also suffer the famine. Good. So when he returns, so look, when he returns, this is talking about after he's returned. It will be, we'll still be here. We'll be worshiping him. It will be wonderful, glorious time. 
for those who are obedient to him, but there will be those who are turning against him even then, d- trying to see what they can get away with. Do we really have to go up and celebrate Sukkot? It's so, so terrible, it's so tedious to go celebrate Sukkot. I don't know who could possibly have that attitude, but apparently some people will. Maybe they'll have just have some bad theology that they haven't gotten rid of yet. You think maybe that's it? Because some people think that those, those festivals of Adonai don't matter anymore. But the scripture says those are God's moadim. These are my appointed times. These are the appointments that I have made to meet with mankind. And that's now. How much more so when he's here are we supposed to show up for our appointments with God? You know, he shows up for his appointments with us. I don't know if you noticed. But he does. He's because, again, he is faithful. Verse 19. Zot tie chatat mitzrayim. Vachatat kol hagoim. Asher lo yaalu lachog et chag. Hasukot. This will be the sin of Egypt. Some say the punishment of Egypt. But I'm sh- I'm sh- you see chatat? You know the word chatat? Sin. This will be the sin of Egypt and the sin of all the nations which will not go up to the feast, the feast of Sukkot. They are defying the living God while he's on the earth telling them what they need to do to get rain, to survive. He's telling them, these are my ways, follow them. I'm here now. How can you be so obnoxious, so arrogant to not follow my ways now? But some will. Chatat, sin or sin offering, pardon, some say punishment. Radak, Ibn Ezra, Matsudos even say, could be like punishment. But the word, and almost every time it's interpreted, chatat is sin. Zechariah 14.20, in that day, even the bells of the horses, on the horses shall be inscribed, holy to Adonai, kadosh ladonai. Everyone say, kadosh ladonai. Holy to Adonai. The metal pots in the house of Adonai shall be like the basins before the altar. What are we saying here when we say kadosh ladonai? Where have we seen this phrase before? Have you, have you heard this phrase? Kadosh ladonai, holy to the Lord, holy to Adonai. Where, is this, where do you see this phrase? Oh, okay. All right. We're going through reading the books about the Mishkan, like we have the model out here. Did you see the model out here, the Mishkan? You like it? Is it beautiful? Right. And, the, and, and along with creating and making, you know, Batzalel and, and all these people helping and building the Mishkan, they also uh, made something else, right? They made the garments for the Kohanim and the Kohen Hagadol, right? And when they did the Kohen Hagadol, there was something that went on his turban. You know he didn't wear a kippah, he wore a turban, right? And on the turban, there was something on the turban. Is this coming to you? Something on the turban, what was it? There's a golden plate. And then the golden plate, it said, Kadosh Ladonai, holy to Adonai, set apart. Pure and set apart for Adonai. Today Yeshua is our Kohen Hagadol. And he is Kadosh Ladonai. Amen? Well, that's what it used to be. It used to be just the Kohen Hagadol had Kadosh Ladonai. When Yeshua returns, when God is reigning from Jerusalem on the throne in the whole, a new holy temple, even the horses in Jerusalem will have, even their bells on the horses will say, Kadosh Ladonai. Even the metal pots will be like basins in front of the altar. God, take a look at that model, the basin that the Kohanim, you know, polished brass that the Kohanim used to have to go and wash themselves, hands and feet, and they would be, have to look themselves in the face. 
before they go to serve Adonai. Am I here? Am I pure? Did I, did I do teshuva? You know, sometimes it's hard for people to look at themselves in the face. To look at themselves in the face and still come before Adonai. Sometimes it's hard for people to come to services because what they know they did on a particular week. Did you know that? Exodus or Shemot 28, 36 and 37 it was that golden plate of pure gold attached by a blue, a techalet type blue cord on the turban of the Kohen Hagadol. It was on his forehead. What does it mean? Kadosh Ladonai, holy, set apart for Adonai. And what does it infer that this is on the bells of the horses now? The whole city is serving Adonai. The whole city is set apart for Adonai. Everything in it is set apart for Adonai. It's a holy status. A holy status. Everything. See, there's going to be so much sacrifice from all the nations coming in, pouring into Jerusalem, that everyone's going to be, have to be involved in the work to get everything taken care of, to store things and to... Right? Do all the service in the house. Things that normally would be uh, profane, just normal, are now considered set apart for Adonai. Like, as, as, as such a holy status that they have the same words on their bells that the Kohen Hagadol had on his forehead. Indeed, every metal pot in Jerusalem, every single pot, and in Ye not just Jerusalem, but in Yehuda, the whole area of Yehuda, shall be holy to Adonai Tzavahot. And all those who sacrifice shall come and take of these to boil their sacrificial meat in. So when you go out and look at that Mishkan model out there and you see like there's a bunch of bowls on the side, right? There's going to be a lot, need to be a lot more bowls because everyone in the world is going to be coming to celebrate Sukkot there. At least representatives from everyone, some say everyone, coming to make sacrifice to Adonai. That's going to take a lot of bowls and they're all going to have to be set aside for Adonai. Are you with me? And that day, there shall be no more traitors. T-R-A-D-E-R-S, not T-R-A-I-T. Anyway, it won't be any of those either, though. And therefore, uh, in the house of Adonai, the Adonai, master of legions, or God of armies, Adonai Tzavaot. The Jewish study Bible, not the Messianic Jewish study Bible, the Jewish study Bible says, are you, are you ready? About this verse, it says, Holiness will be so per pervasive. I, you really need to get this. I got to pause. I'm sorry. You really need to get this. The Jewish study Bible says of this time, holiness will be so pervasive that every mundane household object will be holy. And therefore, there will be no need for merchants to sell ritual pure vessels. The whole, everything in the city is going to be taken for use at the temple. And the last verse, there will be so many offerings, the temple will be insufficient. The temple will be insufficient. It will be necessary to consecrate all the pots in Jerusalem and even all of Jehu Judah to be used for the peace offerings, says Radak. Radak suggests that there will be so many offerings and so many donations that there will be no need for any merchants because everything needed for the temple will be there. This reminds me of the heart of the people in Shemot in Exodus after being rescued. When we went into the wilderness, we'll go into the mountain. God says how to make the Mishkan, and, and, and he gifts certain people, craftsmen, to, to do the work to make the Mishkan that's out there, right? Those craftsmen had to do what? 
near the beginning of their work. They had to beg, they tell Moshe to beg the people to stop bringing all their offerings because they're bringing too much. It's like way too much. We don't need this much. Please tell them to stop. And Moses and God were saying, I wish their heart was always like this. <laughs> I wish their heart was always like this. Folks, this is the end. Israel, I want you to think about the story we've been going through. Israel here is restored. Jerusalem is restored. The earth is restored. Yeshua is restored and, and more than restored. He's sitting on the throne. He gave up his divinity to come down here. Now he went up and sit at the Father's right hand. Now he's on the earth reigning. Yesh God has remembered his covenant with his people. Again, at this point in Yechezkel, that's Ezekiel 39.25, Yah says, that's God says, I will never again. This is why I believe it's one war, because it doesn't make sense otherwise. At the end of this story, as, in, as given by Yechezkel, Yah, God says, I will never again hide my face from them, from his people, from Israel. The Jewish study Bible says at this point, at this point, this is very important for today especially. At this point, all Israel will have what? All Israel will have the Spirit of God, which will enable them, which will enable, what is the Spirit of God for? Which will enable them to manifest God's holiness. Thank you again, Karen, wherever you are, right? The reason for the Ruach HaKodesh is to empower you to live the life of holiness he's called you to live. Amen? Amen. Now we know Bikurim is the feast of first fruits for barley. Shavuot is the first fruits of wheat, right? Sukkot is the final harvest. Shavuot is when the Torah and the Ruach were first, were first given. Sukkot is when the Ruach will be given to all of Israel. Shavuot is when the tokens were given. You know, when we think tokens, I mean, it seems like a small thing. The Torah is not a small thing. But in the, when he returns, the Torah will be here. It'll be going out. You know, we have discussions and arguments about the Torah, right? About what does this point mean? What does that point? Rabbi so-and-so says, Rabbi so-and-so says, and all these arguments about it. And Yeshua came to make it as clear as he could for us, and you still have arguments. <laughs> we still have arguments. But then he'll be sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. Guess what? No more arguments. If you have an argument, he's there. Ask him. The Torah, it says it on our, on our Torah scroll on the cover. The Torah will go forth from Jerusalem. Shavuot and Sukkot are connected. The same with the Spirit and the Torah. They're connected by these festivals. Shavuot is when the tokens were given. It's the engagement. The engagement. Sukkot is the coronation. Sukkot is the enthronement. Sukkot is the wedding feast of the Lamb. And the nations are expected to attend. Does that make sense? You've survived. You have, you know, you have given your heart to Messiah. You, you've turned your life over to God. You're here. He's returned to the earth. He's reigning from Jerusalem. 
I don't understand how anybody could have some other kind of mind, some other intention, some other kind of attitude about it. But many people have come to Messiah who are alive to this, at this very day who don't have the right attitude. You are supposed to be living, and you are, whether you acknowledge it or not, living in the kingdom right now. The kingdom is now and not yet. It's not here in fullness, but it's here, and you are a part of it. You're supposed to, we're supposed to be living as lights in this world. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We're supposed to be glowing in the darkness so people see a difference, so they can see his ways, so they can see the way. Yeah. <laughs> Shavuot, the engagement, the promise of his coming. You know, one of the gifts of the Ruach is healing. One of the gifts of the Ruach is healing. And it's written that healing comes through the prayers of the righteous and through the prayers of the elders and with the anointing of oil. Have you read this? Do you know this already? So after the blessing, after the hamotzi, we're going to give you an opportunity to come for prayer. And the elders, <laughs> elders, we, we can pray. I, I'm springing this on Bill. I don't know if he was running, planning to run away or anything, but I want to, if you would, as one of the elders, come up and pray with me for people with the anointing oil. We've got some anointing oil in here in the cart for people that need it, for people that need healing. And I want you, when you pray, all parties involved, you need to trust. You need to believe. If you don't believe, I don't think you'll come up anyway. <laughs> right? Why would you come up if you don't believe? But put your faith in God. Put your faith in his word and what it says and what it says to do. If his word says come to the elders so they can anoint with oil and you'll be healed, then what should you do? Believe, uh, believe that word, but I'm going to stay over here, Rabbi, and never go ask him. Okay. What did we say faith was? Faith, faithfulness. You, you live it out. You do the things it says. Right? Thanks, Keith. <laughs> if you're online... Please type in your prayer requests. Keith, Keith's sitting over there at the laptop. He will see your prayer requests, and we can pray for you too. And we'll see you all tonight at 825 for our Shavuot service. But before I do the blessing, I wanna, there's something else I want to talk about. And it's, it's in the same theme. I didn't plan on doing this until this morning. There are things that are going on in people's lives. And there are things I've been studying that are just matching up too closely. And they go with this theme as well. The didache, which means the teaching. It's written in Greek in the first century by the teaching of the apostles is the full name of it. It's what they were giving to people as the basics. People who were coming to faith from the nations who didn't know anything yet. You know, what are the basics here? You know, after that letter that was really super short, right? It's something you were supposed to grow from. And one of the things they said in the Didache says in the list of things to do, says, my child, flee from all evil and everything like it. Free from all, flee from all evil and everything like it. 
Shaul or Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, he said, abstain from every form of evil. We have, you know, there are people who are stressed out beyond belief. There are people who don't have the peace that they should have. And peace is like a wholeness, a wholeness not just of your body, which is one thing we're, we're having issues with as well, a wholeness of your body, a wellness of your body. But there's a wellness of your mind as well. Things like anxiety taking hold of people. You know, hey, one of the things you need to focus on to get rid of anxiety? I, I woke up, I don't know, years ago, because I'd heard all, the, all kinds of messages for many years, right? I heard all the messages, and yeah, mental ascent, mental ascent. And yeah, I believe, you know, Yeshua is Messiah. I believe, I understand, I understand it all, right? Woke up in the middle of the night, like shot up, you know, in the middle, <laughs> laying down flat. My, my torso pops up. I'm never going to die. <laughs> I'm never going to die. Like, this body's going to die, but I'm never going to die. All the things you stress about in this life, there's some root to it all. What is it that anxiety comes from? It comes from fear, fear from different kinds of things, fear of what if I don't recover from this illness? What if I don't get the money I need for X, Y, Z? We're not called to live in fear. Yeah, fear is going to affect you. There are things going to come up in your life that are going to affect you. But we are not called to remain in fear. We bring our, our needs to an almighty God. And he is able to meet all our needs. All of our needs. Derech Eretz Zuta says, get this, be afraid of a light sin. Some people have the wrong attitude. When he comes back, people are still going to have the wrong attitude. People who are believers have a wrong attitude now. Be afraid of a light sin, for this may bring you to a grave sin. You know that little bit of leaven permeates the whole lump of bread? Le that's the nature of leaven. That's why l sin is so dangerous. That's why sin is likened to leaven. Sin, leaven permeates the whole loaf. Sin will permeate your life. It will take over if you let it. It's le letting sin into your life is letting death into your life. Don't do it. Don't give, in the words of Shaul, don't let the devil have a foothold in your life. He's not going to stop with the foothold. Do you understand? If you neglect one commandment, you will finally be neg negligent of other commands. One leads to more, says Derech Eretz Suta. If you have overlooked the words of Torah willingly, finally you will be overlooked, willingly or unwillingly says Derech Eretz Zuta. Abstain from injustice and trembling. Why do you tremble? Trem trembling from fear, right? The reason you're trembling, well, maybe there's a medical condition somewhere else, right? But mostly we're thinking trembling comes from fear, from anxiety. Abstain from injustice and trembling shall not come near you. Now, that's not one that's from the rabbis. That's from Yeshayahu. That's from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14. It's in the word of God. Do you believe the word of God? Thank you. Thank you. Take heart and do not be afraid, but go, for the Lord is with you, and he will keep you from every evil as the apple of an eye. Keep far from a minor sin, lest it lead you to a grievous sin. And here's something Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, you know this guy, right? 
Rabbi Nachman has said, when a person, get this in your spirit, when a person does one sin, then it causes him to commit related offenses. The first sin, along with the related ones following it, forms a package. Do you understand? It forms a package. The package has a root, though. It has a beginning. Hear are the words of Rabbi Nachman. Remove the first. Remove it. Remove the first one. In order to be free from this package of sins, the original root sin must be purged. Some people have sin in their lives, and they know what it is, and they bear with it. They let it run amok in their lives. And other things, the other sins start popping up in their lives, and they think, I can handle those ones easily. It's just that one. I'm just going to live with that one because I like it, or I, I don't feel like I can stop. The Ruach HaKodesh that was given to you is the, has the same power he's always had and will always have to defeat sin. It's the power that raised the Messiah from the dead. What is it not powerful enough to do in your life? It's the Spirit who created the universe with the Word. What is it not powerful enough to do in your life? How arrogant are we sometimes? Out of fear? God can do anything. And, and that includes anything that you need him to do. Don't just grasp it intellectually. Grasp it in reality. Have faith when you pray. Have faithfulness when you pray. I said all those things first. If you're, in case you're struggling with the idea, I want to throw this one out. You ready? Tell me who said this. Whoever disobeys the least of these meets vote and teaches others to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Anxiety comes from fear. It comes from fear. There are a number of different things that can cause fear. And sometimes there are issues, you know, it can get into your system so that your body can be affected in a way that it becomes an illness that grew from the fear. And then you have both to deal with, you know what I mean? The anxiety is the anxiety, but it has, you know, but the real root is beyond the disease. The root was there already. Are you with me? There are things that all of us in this room need to deal with. And to deal with them properly, we need to focus on the future. We need to focus and realize, say with me, I'm never going to die. What do I have to be afraid of here? This, look, this whole life is so short when compared to eternity. Don't let anything here stand in your way. Don't let anything here give you a bad attitude. I don't care how bad things went for you at work this week. I don't care. When you come in here, you know what this place is about? This is a refuge. 
This is a place to clean off the garbage. It's not a place for you to come and, and, and complain and whine about the things. If there's something you need healing for or prayer for, bring it up because we're here for you. We love you. We love you. Don't just open your mouth to grumble. You hear me? That's not the right attitude. If you need prayer, if you need help, ask, and we will pray for you because we love you, help you get through it. We need to, as believers, we should have the right attitude. We shouldn't be in despair and gloom all the time. People don't come here, you know, in a, in a place of refuge to hear grumbling <laughs> from each other, you know, everything's terrible. Well, we can fix that, man. I'm sorry your week was so tough. We can fix that. I know a guy. <laughs> and he can do anything. Anything. He can fix your situation. He can fix your attitude. He could fix both. Do we want to be the light of the world? called us to be the light of the world and that light is supposed to be different different now, I'm not telling you anything that's, that's wild and crazy if you turn out the lights in here it'll be dark and it won't look any different than it was dark if you turn out the lights in the other room it'll, it'll be dark there too but if you turn on the lights in one room and the lights in the, are off in the other room there's a difference, and you can see it. What does it mean that we're the light of the world? We should be different. It's something people should see in us. And I don't mean like touched by an angel, they see a light bulb behind our head or something. It's talking about the way we live. They can see that you follow Messiah by the way that you live, by the attitude that you carry. An attitude that, ha that speaks out of the Spirit's presence in your life. An attitude of peace, that's shalom, that's joy, that's love. When people have problems, that you actually care about them. It's not some kind of show. Of actual joy. Like, I don't care what disease I'm, I got right now because I know it's something that's it's come to pass. That's a big local term. Everything in this life has come to pass. It's just moving on. I'm going through it. And in the end, in the end, Zechariah 14 Revelation, Daniel, a resurrection to eternal life. Eternal life. No one can take that from you. Nothing can take that from you. You can walk away. That's on you. I don't plan on it, and I hope you don't either. That would be foolish, don't you think? We're called to love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. All. Everyone say all. all. Not part, right? Yeah. You know, if we focus on him and we focus on the future with him, all the fear should just melt away. It should melt away. Now, I know people need help with prayer. They need building up. They need encouragement. And we are called to be encouragers. There are people in this room who inspire you. Do you tell them? There are different, different aspects of their life which inspire you. Do you tell them? Do you encourage them? 
I want, you to, I want you to put that in your mind and keep it there. Some things I tell you, right, they float right out when you leave the room because I talk for too long or whatever. I, I, I don't know what you said. But put this one in your mind. Put this one in your mind and keep it. Be an encourager. Those people, whatever it is, I can't, Larry, I love it, man. I, not many guys will do some of the things that you do. It's, it's just so, uh, the gift of helps is maybe the most precious gift to a minister, I'm telling you. The guy who will put out the signs, the uh, people like Angie who will come in and wipe down every single chair every single week before you get here so it's clean and disinfected and everything so you can feel safe in here. People who help with the bulletins so you know what's going on, even if, you don't, even if many of you don't even read them, they're there for you. The people who do read them and who do look at those and, and use that reading schedule, how precious it is to the people who use it. Everyone is supposed to, I don't know if you know this, everyone's supposed to come to the service with something to share something. Did you know that? Scripture says come with a psalm or a song or some, you know, some word from Adonai, come some, some word of praise. That's why we let you, ha that's why we pass the mic around and let everyone say, what's, you know, do you have needs in your life right now? We, we want to know so we can pray with you. We want to hear, but you know what, we don't just want that. We don't want people to think all there is is gloom and doom around here. Or, you know, everyone's sick all the time. No. You know what? All of you are sitting here because God's answered many of your prayers already. Because he is faithful to you. If he wasn't, you wouldn't be here. We want to hear the praise. When you had cancer and you don't have cancer anymore, we want to hear it. We want to hear it, but more than that, we want you to let him hear it. The, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. say so. That's what praise is. When we worship him, we have songs that talk about who he is. That's beautiful. And we acknowledge who he is. He's the God who sustains all. He's the God who heals and these sort of things, right? That's worship. When we say, he healed me, that's praise. That's praise. We say, I don't know, I, I don't follow as much as I used to. I, we, we say, Michael Jordan, he's a great basketball player. <laughs> that's like a form of, of worship in a small way. When we say, I can't believe, did you see Michael Jordan make that shot? That's like a form of praise. Does this make sense? It's a sa and if we say things like that about some sports personality, Kovachomer, how much more so should we be doing that with a God who's intimately involved in our own lives? And all the needs that we always keep bringing to him. And rightfully so, because he's the God who provides for our every need. But isn't it right to say thank you? Yeshua healed ten leopards and ten of them walked away and ten of them were healed. How many returned to say thank you? One. I think nine lepers had an attitude problem. <laughs> Let's not be the people with the attitude problem. Can I, uh, amen? Can we not be the people with the attitude problem? We acknowledge who it is that fulfills our every need. And we praise him when he does. And we come to him with every need we have. But let's not be the grumblers in the wilderness. Amen? Coming very, very close to Shavuot. It's about four hours. 
four hours from the time. You know, some of you have been getting ready for Shavuot. Some of you have been fasting for Shavuot. You know, before the Shavuot, when the Torah was given, the people were told to prepare for three days. Something big was going to happen. They were expecting something big to happen. God's coming down in the mountain on Shavuot to meet with us. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What's that going to be like? Do you think anybody took the commandments lightly about getting ready because three days God's coming down in the mountain? Yeshua, when he left, stay in Jerusalem until, and it was until Shavuot, when the gift was given, the gift that would enable them to walk in holiness, the Ruach HaKodesh. Think they were preparing? Think they had, you think it was just, ah, okay, whatever. Let's go to Walmart. Ah, I don't know, go to IHOP. I'm hungry. What do you think it was? What, it, what was in their minds for, those, for all those days when they're waiting like, I'm supposed to be in Jerusalem. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't understand entirely, but something's going to happen. God's going to show up. There's some kind of gift we're supposed to get on Shavuot. And I know what the history of Shavuot, man, something big happened in history. I read it in the Torah. <laughs> Something's going to happen on Shavuot. God's going to show up in a big way again. Again. It's a season. It's one of the Moadim. It's one of God's appointments. It's a season when God shows up in miraculous ways. In miraculous ways. If you need some kind of miracle in your life, you should be here. Tonight, 825. I don't know what else I can say about it. I mean, I'll be here. Like that, it's a big deal. But God will be showing up on Shavuot. You with me? And I'm not going to miss it. I hope you don't either. So we, we have grape juice today and challah? Okay. I know the two are saved for later. We've got to wave two loaves, right? The <laughs> Bible tells us. Got to wave two loaves. Everybody's going to be full already. So <laughs> I don't know if we'll eat any of the two loaves. But we'll have them to wave, though, later. Uh, in the meantime, we have, I think, probably a really good uh, own egg for after service, after the blessing, right, in the hamotzi. And uh, I'm... I'm pretty sure there's usually a lot of food, so if you want, need to get prayer, uh, you can come up and meet with uh, me and Bill and Keith, if you would join us up here, and Sherelle, would you come up as well to pray for people? Uh, and anyone that wants to, got any volunteers out there? I know there's some people who like to pray. <laughs> You can come up here as well and pray for people. I don't want you to do it to get some check in the box. I don't want you to do it because you want to be somebody. I, I, I want people who come up who will come up here and pray for other people because you love the people in this room and you care about their welfare. That's the kind of people I want up here to pray for people. If that's your heart, I want you up here. If it's not, I don't care if I said your name. Don't come up here. Fair enough? I'm going to say the blessing. And then uh, we'll do the hamotzi together. And then if people want prayer, they can come up. We have the room a little longer than usual. So uh, I could have went longer, but I want the longer time to be for prayer. <laughs> All right? We might get a special treat. The Sudanese guys come in and practice their music in you know, on Saturday nights. So between 6 and 8, we told them they could, as long as they don't rearrange anything, they could come in and practice today too. And their music is very lively and bouncy. It's, it's beautiful. I always wanted to come in here, but we're always busy. So maybe today, see what happens. 
You know, because Shavuot is a day for the nations. It's a day for us to come together, you know? And we're in a building with two other congregations. I hope we pray that those other congregations are blessed as well. All of us, again, are like that Mishkan, that model of the Mishkan out there. We're all like the real Mishkan. None of these congregations, none of us know how long we're going to be in this building. God may call us to leave at any time and go to some other building, or he might be here for many years. It's not in my hands. It's in God's hands. And that's true for all of us. And that's true for every person in this life about your life, about where you live, about where you work. All of it's in God's hands. All the time. All the time. And I advise you not to fight against him. If he's telling you to do something, you need to do it. We need to be faithful. Yavarech Adonai v'yishmarecha Ya'er Adonai panavelecha v'yichunecha Yisa Adonai panavelecha Vyasem lecha shalom. Adonai bless you and keep, guard, preserve you. Adonai make his face, his face to shine on you. And be gracious to you, giving you his mercy, undeserved mercy, smiling on you with his favor. Adonai, lift up his countenance upon you, not turning away when you're in need, but making his manifest presence known to you, in you, over you, around you, and in you. and give you his perfect peace, his shalom, that wholeness in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, and in your soul. May he give you in your family, in your, in your city, in your country, in this world, may he give you his shalom. B'shem Yish, whatever's going on around, whatever chaos is around you, whatever kind of hate and oppression is around you, may he give you his shalom to go right through. To go right through. B'shem Yeshua. Amen.